So more exposed surface area means more pinning. So there's a caveat to that. If you have too much surface area and not enough relative humidity, then the block is going to dry out. I think it's really promising. I, I'm getting the sense that it might not be humidity. Some of the factors that he mentioned was long stems, which usually comes from a lack of fresh air exchange and that should turn this grow around. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm going to be diving into a little bit more of problem and solution topics when it comes to mushroom farming. So I get a lot of questions about, you know, how to resolve specific problems. People email me all the time, and I'm planning to do a dissection of different problems that I come across. And if you have a problem of your own that you'd like questions answered, leave a comment in the section below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and hit that like button. It helps our channel grow so we can answer more questions like these. I'm gonna dive into this cool forum that I found. It's called Mushroom Growing for Beginners and Experts. Um, there's a lot of really good questions if you ever want to take a look yourself. So this specific case, uh, Martinez asks, hi, both king oysters and gray oysters started pinning, then aborting. A few still fruit, but lots have long stems, tiny caps, and twisty clusters. Okay, so now he gives the room parameters. So CO2's around 650 ppm's, Relative humidity is 88 to 95%. Temperature schedule is undefined and he's using ultrasonic fogger. So what could be wrong? My first thoughts about thinking about why mushrooms abort, usually it's because of the humidity. Um, if it gets dry, then oftentimes those tiny little pins won't get enough water pumped into them and they'll abort. But this guy says that his Humidity is at 88 to 95%, which for pinning, that could be a little bit low. That could be some of the problems. Uh, but I'm looking here at his tent. And to me, the, uh, the humidity coming in, um, it seems like it's being piped in from the top and falling down. So I, I'm getting the sense that it might not be humidity. Some of the factors that he mentioned was long stems which usually comes from a lack of fresh air exchange. But then in the same post, he says that his CO2 is at 650. So that kind of rules out possible humidity, possible uh, fresh air exchange issues. So then my third thought to mind is that there's probably some contamination going on. So the fact that he's getting fruits, but they kind of look ugly, means that they're not ideal. I can see a picture of his pin sets that are right forming on this fruiting block and the pin sets look really good. So that to me means that it probably wasn't contamination in the production phase, but it's probably coming from somewhere in his fruiting chamber. So oftentimes with tents like these that aren't insulated well, um, there could be condensation that drips onto the mushrooms and with how these, uh, these shelves are set up, I would be watching out for any drips from the shelving that are hitting the mushrooms. And that could affect the pinning when they're very small, they're very sensitive. Um, so that, that to me, it seems like it could be contamination. So what I would do to mitigate this is pull out all the blocks, deep clean your shelving, deep clean your grow room. And since it's a huge uh, ultrasonic fogger, I would clean out that fogger um, maybe introduce a UV sterilizer in the fogger so that keeps that contamination to a minimum. I think it's really promising. It's just a, a quick cleaning and keeping contamination that should turn this grow around. So Tyler Cruz's post is about inducing pinning. So he writes, so I got this giant six pound bag of spawn that looks like it's ready to fruit. What would be the best way to fruit it? I've seen people cut slits in the bags, put a block in a monotub, or does more surface area mean more pinning? 
Okay, so this is kind of uh, a topic about how to induce pinning. So I'm looking at the spawn bag. It looks really healthy, it's fully colonized, it's ready to go. So the first thing that I would consider is the temperature differential. So you're gonna wanna move grain spawn from a warmer climate or incubation area to a cooler climate or a fruiting tent. Um, so in nature, this happens during a rainstorm. When, when you think about mushrooms popping up, it's typically after a rainstorm that cools off the environment. So that's gonna be the, the first step is figure out a way to decrease your temperatures three, four, 10 degrees. That's gonna start trigger pinning. So another question is about cutting slits in the top of the bag. So this is another factor of how you induce pinning and it's the evaporative effect of mushroom mycelium and it kind of causes it to go into this other life cycle of pinning and fruiting. So when you cut slits in the bag, it's going to off gas, moisture, CO2, create some convection in the bag, which causes the mycelium to form pins. So that's why people cut slits in the bag. Now the next uh, question is putting the block in a mono tub. So that's kind of a, a more complicated process than just cutting slits, but I do have a video about mono tubs if you wanna check that out. It's a lot more than you know, just shoving this into a mono tub if that's what this person is thinking. So more exposed surface area means more pinning. So there's a caveat to that. If you have too much surface area and not enough relative humidity, then the block is going to dry out. Maybe this person has seen shiitake blocks that are fully exposed and pinning in all directions. But typically, I like to just slice a tiny little slit and let the mushrooms fruit out of there because it preserves that moisture content in the bag. However, if you have you know, 95 to 99% humidity in your grow tent or in a tote, then feel free to fully open that block with another caveat is that you could expose this to more contaminants. So I think there's a few ways to go about this. What I would do is probably uh, put it in a cooler environment, cut some slits in the top, and be patient and you should have some pins in about a week to 10 days. Thanks for watching The Mushroom Doctor. If you have questions of your own, leave comment below or hit me up on Instagram. Until next time, much love.